What's up, welcome back. We are building out a newsletter platform and we're talking about setting up our Stripe Connect onboarding flow. And in the last episode, we talked about picking the right account type between Standard Express and Custom. And we also mentioned that as of this recording, it is required, but we're working really hard so that you don't have to pick a specific account type in the future. Today, what I wanna talk about is charge types. So there's several different charge flows and picking the right one is really important because you wanna make sure that you know the trade-offs between each of these different charge flows. So there are three we're gonna talk about today, direct charge, destination charge, and separate charge and transfer. There's a blog post up on dev.2 where you can read in detail all of my recommendations and thoughts about picking between each of these different charge types. At the very bottom, there are several questions that I wanted to run through for our newsletter platform. So here we go. Who does the end customer think they're doing business with? This is an important first question to frame the whole decision. In our scenario, I believe that the readers will think that they're doing business with the newsletter platform. They're gonna to come to newsletter platform and subscribe to lots of different newsletters that they want to read. Now, if they thought they're doing business directly with the author and we instead were acting as a platform where the author could set a custom domain, where users would subscribe somewhere else and consume the newsletter somewhere else, that would be a little bit of a different story. But as it stands in our current formation of the newsletter platform, end users think they'll be doing business with us, which means we want to set up something that uses either separate charge and transfer or destination charges. SCT is sort of shorthand for separate charge and transfer. If instead readers and those subscribing to the newsletters thought that they were doing business with authors, we would want to use direct charges. So this is the first sort of answer is that we probably want to use separate charge and transfer or destination. Now, the second question here is, will the payment need to be split among multiple recipient connected accounts? Now, this one we kind of have to think a little bit about because do we want readers to be able to subscribe for one flat monthly rate and get access to multiple newsletters? Maybe we want to let people subscribe for $20 a month and they can subscribe to 10 different newsletters from potentially 10 different authors. In that scenario, we would want to use separate charge and transfer so that we could collect the $20 and then create 10 different transfers to each of the different authors with their portion of the 20, but that is not the setup we're gonna use. Instead, what we're gonna do is say, each reader will subscribe to each individual newsletter and we'll have a separate subscription for each. And the customer will be doing business directly with the platform. So we will have the shared payment method details that we can use across all the subscriptions. They can manage it, all their billing in one place. So we're gonna use destination charges. The last question is who should pay the Stripe fees? This is an important one and boils down to which charge flow you're using. In the case of direct charges, the charge is actually landing on the connected account. This is most useful when you have a standard connected account experience. Typically, if you're gonna build an e-commerce platform where users are gonna have access to their full Stripe dashboard and the charge is actually ending up on that, that standard connected account, and the standard connected account is familiar with dealing with disputes and fraud, and that connected account knows that there is a single, there is a single connected account that is receiving all of the funds from a single payment that is coming from a customer, that's when you use direct charges. Because readers, our end customers, are going to transact directly with our newsletter platform, it makes much more sense for us to use destination charges because there's a single reader and a single author that are gonna be involved in that subscription. And destination charges will make it a little bit simpler in terms of the flow of funds. If we were to, again, go through that other scenario where we had one subscriber whose funds were ultimately distributed or routed among multiple authors, then we would set this up a little bit differently. All right, let's look at destination charges. And there are a couple different flows that I wanted to talk about inside of here. So this is a great graphic to look at. So when the charge comes in, so let's say we're gonna collect $10 a month for the subscription, then we can define how much we want to transfer to the connected account. And there's a couple different ways that we can take a cut. So we have a whole nother article here on Dev.2 about taking a cut. This is like how you're gonna take a commission as the platform. How are you gonna get paid for facilitating these, these payments? 
So one way you could do it is just charge all of the authors a monthly, a flat monthly fee as the platform in order to use your hosting services. Another way would be to sort of take a commission on each of the payments that are coming from readers to authors. And there's two ways to do it. Number one is to use an application fee. So in this flow here, we are collecting our $10 monthly fee, then we're creating a $10 transfer automatically to the connected account. Then the connected account is gonna pay an application fee back to the platform. The platform then pays the fees out of that application fee, and we have the platform netting 64 cents in this scenario and the connected account netting $8.77. Now there's another flow that we could use instead. Rather than transferring the full amount to the connected account and then taking an application fee, we can transfer a smaller amount to the connected account directly and then take no application fee. So this is, there's, there's the trade-offs between each. If you want the end user to see the amount of the application fee as like a broken down item, then we want to use application fees. If you want to sort of hide how much is being withheld by the platform, then we would want to use this uh, choice to transfer a little bit less to the author. It's possible we want to cut different deals with all of the authors. So maybe some authors will take a 10% cut. Other authors, we might take a 30% cut. And if we don't necessarily want that to be public among or like shared among all of the different authors, what their rates are, then we might want to take this second approach where we're going to just transfer the amount to them that we agreed, but we don't necessarily show the fees that are coming back. So there's a couple different trade-offs there in terms of where you want uh, or like what you want to be visible. There are definitely benefits to showing exactly how much your application fee is. So things to think about. So we are gonna use destination charges. So that is the charge type that we're gonna use. And in order to do so, the differences between the different charge types vary only in the arguments that you're passing to your API calls. So for a direct charge, you would just pass a header. For a destination charge, we're gonna pass some extra parameters in the API call. And for separate charge and transfer, you actually have two API calls, one to create the charge and the other to make the transfer. So we're gonna get into the specifics and we're actually gonna start subscriptions with some details that say we want each of the recurring payments to be a destination charge. And we'll talk about that in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. <music>